19 movies, one directing legend. Before somebody points it out, yes, Argento has technically directed 20 movies, but one of them I won't be including today. It's a comedy drama that he did from the early 70s. I don't think it's possible to get this film in the UK. I don't think they've even done an English dub for this film or a version with English subtitles. I think I would literally have to go to Italy, learn Italian, and then I would still have the challenge of finding the film because I think it is quite a rare film. But it's so far removed from all of Argento's other work in terms of genre because none of these other films are comedy dramas that I, I don't feel bad for leaving it out today, in all honesty. So if you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been doing full reviews for all these films over the past nine months. I've, I've got a review for every single one of them. You'll find those in my Argento playlist. But this is a, a, a condensed collection of my opinions of these films, if you like, and uh, I'm going to be ranking them, obviously, from worst to best. So let's dive in, and we'll start with the film at number 19. This film is just plain nasty, with virtually no redeemable features. We even get a really good look at the killer early on, so there's not that usual sense of mystery that you get in a lot of Argento films. There is an extra twist late on, a change of direction, but it's really unsatisfying. We have to sit through two rapes in this film. There's violence and intimidation. It's just joyless, it really is. Watching this is like sitting on my couch with a black cloud around my head for 90 straight minutes. Asia Argento is woefully miscast. She's at least 10 years too young to be playing a detective. It's, it's one of the worst bits of biased casting I've ever seen in my life. There is this new thing that I've never seen before where the main character gets dizzy if she's around art, but all this leads to is some really dodgy special effects as Argento attempts to portray what this would feel like. There's a really dreadful scene where the killer lures a woman from the middle of a town centre to a deserted warehouse without saying a word to her. Somehow his manly ruggedness is enough to pull this woman to a deserted location like a magnet so he can, he can do her in. It's just a terrible film. I'm sorry, Dario. This one's not worth a lot either, although I was at least mildly along for the ride for a while. The first half has got quite a vibrant colour scheme, a very bouncy sort of Euro feel. It's helped by an entertainingly gruff performance from Adrian Brody, but the killer is dreadful again. If Wurzel Gummidge was a Jallo killer, I think it might look something like this. Plus, he decides to mix things up in the final act by turning into a kidnapper who wants ransom. I, I just found myself getting more and more frustrated and bored as, as we moved towards the conclusion of this. It's really frustrating that this film is called Jallo, and yet it's probably one of Argento's worst Jallo films. Two Evil Eyes is an anthology film featuring just two really long stories together. One of them is by George Romero, one of them is by Dario Argento. Now, to give Argento his due, his is absolutely the best of these two tales. It's about a guy who develops this psychosis where he starts killing animals and this leads him to killing humans. I found it absolutely captivating to watch. I couldn't take my eyes off it. It's helped by the fact that Harvey Keitel is, is playing the main role. The other story, though, by Romero, not as good. It's just this really long-winded tale about gold digging that has a punchline at the end, but it's it's too long for what it is. It, it feels like something that belongs in the Creepshow movie. It's that kind of tone. If it had been a much shorter short, like 15, 20 minutes, and we get that ending, I probably would have grinned and thought, okay, yeah, fine, and then we move on to the next one. But for this one tale to be dragged out so that it's half of a movie, it it was problematic for me. So given the fact that I only really like half of this, it's actually hard for me to imagine me ever putting it on again, to, to be honest. This one's messy. It was the first time that Argento filmed and set something in America, but I think he did that entirely for commercial reasons. I think the story itself might have been better suited to just be another one that takes place in Europe. This was also the first time that Asia Argento did a film for her father. She is at least a bit more suited for this part than the one she did in the Stenthal Syndrome, but I don't think the fact that the film is in America does her any favour. She's a little bit of a fish out of water. I mainly remember this for two particular reasons which are not very flattering towards the movie. Firstly, there's this scene where 
somebody gets decapitated in an elevator shaft and it produces one of the worst special effect shots I've ever seen in my life. It's absolutely laughable. If it wasn't for the fact that Argento would go on to do some reasonably decent stuff after this, I would have said that this was the jump the shark moment of his career. There's also this thing in this film where people can get their heads cut off and still remain alive for a few more seconds just so they can give out a clue to the protagonist. An absolutely horrible idea and it just adds to the, the feeling of this being really messy and all over the place. It's not completely without merit. It is a film that I'd be willing to give another try at some point, but it's, it's certainly one of uh, his weaker efforts overall, I'd say. We're slowly starting to move towards the more reasonable ones now. This is watchable, a little bit bland for the most part, maybe. It's certainly lacking inspiration when it gets to its final act. It constantly feels like this film is searching for some big signature moments that it can be remembered by, but it just can't find any. Having Dracula turn into a giant flea and bound down a corridor, that's not inspiration, that's just desperation. The film does have some nice production design here, here and there, some nice costume design. But on the other hand, it has some really terrible special effects, like when the Asia Argento character burns to death. That is that is really difficult to watch. And I'm sorry, but Rutger Hauer makes a really terrible Van Helsing. It, it's not a bad film, but I can't say I'll ever be rushing out to buy this. It feels like Argento needed to get this off his chest as some weird passion project or something. But I've seen way better Dracula films. Given the fact that I gave this film two and a half out of five, which is sort of my average score, I still felt disappointed by it because I'd been led to believe that this, is, this was one of the unsung gems of the Argento filmography. Two days before I watched it, actually, somebody on Facebook was saying that it was like their favourite Argento film and that it was a complete masterpiece. I didn't have that experience. I mean, I like the opera setting in it and some of the music's all right. There's one completely brilliant sequence where Daria Nicolodi gets shot through a door and, and that leads to an exciting chase through a duct. And I like the main actress in this, who plays the main protagonist. I think she's brilliant and I would have liked to have seen her in more of these films. But I'm guessing once Asia Argento came along, opportunities for other actresses became very limited at that point. The, the big downside to this is the ending. It's like a double ending that takes place in two different locations, but it's just poorly written and if I'm honest I don't like the MO of the killer in this film either the whole needles under the eyes thing I just found that to be a little bit tedious but I've only seen the film once it's definitely one that I'm going to give another try to at some point but for now I've got it down here in 14th I'd heard this one was terrible but I found it to be a reasonably entertaining evening. There are a few things about the story which don't quite stack up and I think I went into those in my review. I like the killer's MO though. The actual card games in this are a lot of fun to watch. I think Liam Cunningham and Stefania Rocker do a very good job in, in the lead roles, albeit they don't have much chemistry when they're on screen together. There are a few decent kills in the film as well. I, I was reasonably engaged by this. It's certainly far from being Argento's worst film. This is another one which scored slightly higher with me than its rep and what makes this achievement doubly impressive is the fact that this DVD was so old I could only watch the film on like a small square in the middle of my really large TV. So not the most enjoyable viewing experience from a technical standpoint but I still had a good time. I, I had a grin on my face all the way through this film. There's some really wacky stuff in it, some, some great humour, good gore as well. This was Asia Argento's third film working with her dad and easily her best role up to this point. Julian Sands is in this playing the Phantom. I, I really like Sands as an actor. Not the best I've ever seen him but he, he's still really good. There's lots of fun side characters and I just enjoyed the movie. I really really want to get this on a proper Blu-ray with a proper picture so I can enjoy it properly. When it comes to the Three Mothers trilogy, I doubt you'll find many people who won't have Mother of Tears as their weakest of the three films. But given the fact that Dario waited so long to do this after Inferno, I, I think it turned out pretty good in the end. The film is ludicrously violent to the point where you'll just laugh at some of the kills in this. But I think Asia puts in a pr pretty good turn. The story is reasonably well constructed. It's a good closing chapter to the trilogy. It could have done with a little bit of touching up 
here and there, but I'll certainly always watch this if, if I'm watching Suspiria and Inferno first. And it's got a great sequence at a train station, which I absolutely love, uh, including a weird bit of invisibility. That There's some crazy stuff in this film, but I, I kind of like it. it it's, it's certainly one of the better films from the second half of Argento's career. Another one, like opera, that other people might have higher in their own rankings, but let me just say at this point, we're into the top 10 now, and coincidentally, we're also roughly at the juncture where I, I really like all of these films from this point onwards. I don't really have any major negatives for Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Some of the more minor characters are a little bit underdeveloped, a little bit irritating at times, but I like the main couple. They're fascinating people. I think there are some great deaths in this film. They're nicely staged. Uh, Argento takes his time with them, builds up lots of good atmosphere and suspense. I like the overall indie sort of rock feel to the movie and I love the closing moment with the, the, the death in slow motion. I think that's an absolutely fantastic way to finish this off. My DVD for this came with this amazing poster. Here it is. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, that's just pure art. I've, I've actually been thinking about asking my wife and kids if, if they'd quite like to have this up in the living room, maybe. Come to think of it, I might, I might just keep it in the, in the DVD box. But this film was like a breath of fresh air watching it because it, it was probably the first proper giallo film that Argento had done for quite some time. And for me, it's got a feel to it that's similar to his early animal trilogy films this could this could actually be the fourth animal trilogy film there's even an animal theme in it to a point and i love the opening sequence involving the train that that is absolutely phenomenal so yeah i i really enjoyed this one i could not believe when i watched this film just last week how good it was this is dario's new film he, he brought it out earlier this year he's over 80 now and still directing to put this into context the two films before this were Jallo and Dracula 3D. I mean, I was on fumes uh, by the time I got to Dark Glasses. I mean, I was ready for the end of my review series. I didn't want to watch one more film, but I sort of felt I had to just to be a completionist about it. It even cost me £20. I had to buy it from Amazon Italy. I had to go through all this effort. And at the back of my mind, I thought this is probably just going to be like another Jallo, you know. To my amazement, it was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. It's got captivating characters, a good story. It's got a good sense of drama to it. The killer is reasonable. The music is absolutely awesome in the film. It's got a great chase sequence towards the end. Some really surprising horror moments within it all. And I can't recommend it enough. This for me is absolutely the best film of the entire second half of Argento's career, bar none. It obviously hasn't made it into the really high part of the ranking today. That's because we've still got some really classic films yet to come. But I've, I've only seen Dark Glasses once. It could potentially rise up in the future. But given the fact I only watched it like a few days ago, for it to already come eighth, it's beaten the likes of Sleepless and Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Honestly, if you've not checked it out yet, give it a shot. So Cat and Nine Tails only just wins out over Dark Glasses, but only by the thinnest of horses' hairs, it's got to be said. I really went back and forth a bit with these two. I think what won it in the end for Cat and Nine Tails is the fact that this was probably the film that solidified me as an Argento fan. I mean, I'd seen Suspiria before Cat and Nine Tails, but like a lot of people who just randomly watch Suspiria and enjoy it, it didn't necessarily make me want to go out and chase down every last film by that same director. But then I watched Cat and Nine Tails at some point, realised it was by the same guy who, who did Suspiria, and then that led me to watching a third film, and then a fourth and a fifth. And then, then it was like, wow, this guy's done so many cool movies. I've got to do a review series for him. For a second film in his career, this is such a top effort. I mean, this is quite a complex tale, this, and yet it's, it's just handled with great skill. It's one of those films where you can watch it several times over and you're constantly discovering new facets. I would say that even though this isn't one of the absolute, absolute best Argento films, it's possibly got the best story of all, or, or at least close to the best story. If you look around on the internet, you might find some people who have got this as their number one. 
I've got it just outside the top five, but it's still an absolutely top class film. It does play a similar game to the Stenthal Syndrome in terms of a certain late plot development. But the difference with this film is that it actually gets away with it. It doesn't just play out like a bad piece of snuff. This is a proper serious Jalo film with decent kills, decent music. And it has that amazing camera shot that goes down the side of the house. And about half an hour later, seemingly, it finally ends up at the window that it needs to be at. You get that one final great death at the end, which is almost blink and you'll miss it. it. It reminds me a little bit of the craziness of the end of Four Flies on Grey Velvet. I think I gave this four out of five when I reviewed it. And for me, that should be the absolute minimum score. Anybody should give this. If you give this less than four out of five, I think my first question to you would be, what are you doing, son? When I came to this film for the first time, Argento's first film, I'd already decided to do my review series and Looking back, I think I was just expecting a nice, gentle, competent opener, but nothing of the quality of the later films. But no, I was completely wrong. This is an outstanding film for Argento to have done on his debut. I mean, from the minute you see the killer taking those photographs of that woman in the opening scene to that creepy music, I, I was completely hooked. I mean, this is an engaging mystery. It's creepy all the way through. I mean, this is a film where the protagonist could potentially be killed by someone with a meat cleaver in broad daylight in the middle of a residential street. The sequence that leads to the bus station is, is absolutely fantastic. There's some really great shots in that. And just the whole film is directed so well that the, the way that the shots are set up, the colour schemes, the shadows, lighting, it, it's, it's all there. This is a really gr great package of a film. And if I was giving somebody advice on how to get into Argento, I wouldn't say start with Suspiria. I'd just say start from the beginning and take them chronologically because right from the get-go, this guy was really on it. And I think if he did start from the very beginning... By the time you got to any of the weaker ones, you would have long become a fan by that point, if, if that was your destiny. So this is the first sequel to Suspiria. It was made quite quickly after that film. It's not as highly regarded as its predecessor, but it should be, because for me, this is only a smidgen less than Suspiria. It's not very famous, this film, but it should be because it's a, it's a cracking example of how to do a follow-up. I, I, I've got hardly anything negative to say about this film. I love everything that, that's, that takes place in New York. I love all the sequences in Rome. I think the movie looks terrific. It's got a great score. It's unpredictable because you've got several different viewpoints that are shown throughout the story and you never have any idea who's going to get killed off at any point. This film's got one of my favourite scenes in any Argento film where the woman gets killed in the apartment in Rome. I mean, the music in that scene, the way that it's staged with that guy who falls on the woman, and she, even though he's dead and she can't get out from underneath, it's just an absolutely terrific kill scene. I absolutely love Inferno. I think I've seen it three times now. It's absolutely terrific. We're into the absolute elite ones now. I did not expect to love this film as much as I did. For one thing, coming into this, I'd been on a run of reviewing, so Deep Red, Suspiria, Inferno, Tenebrae, and I thought to myself, this can't go on. There can't just be great film after great film after great film. At some point, there's got to be a bang average one. And I thought to myself, surely it will be the one where supposedly there's a girl using insects to help her catch a killer. That sounds really dubious to me. But to my surprise, the film is just another outstanding film in a long string of them around about this point in, in Argento's career. The insect thing is actually quite subtle when you watch the film. It's, it's just there for a little bit of artistic gloss. It's not actually one of the big things about the story. You know, this whole thing isn't getting resolved because of insects. It's, it's, it's just a little stylistic touch to, a, to an otherwise almost normal Jalo film. It's a very sensual, dreamy sort of film. This, the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. Jennifer Connelly in the lead role is instantly likeable. I find it quite funny that some of the actresses who were only ever in one Argento film, I find it funny that their one film a lot of the time is better than any of Asia's, even though she was in like six of them. But I've got no doubt that had Asia Argento been 10 years younger, she probably would have had this role and she probably would have done very well in it. Donald Pleasance is in this as well, but it's not one of his more notable turns. But the film is still amazing. You know, Donald Pleasance doesn't need to be amazing in this. The rest of the, the, rest of the film treads all the water for him. The last 20 minutes or so, it's absolutely fantastic watching the main character have to run the gauntlet that she does, all the craziness that's around her and she comes out of it un unscathed in the end. I even love the monkey with the razor in this. 
For me, this is the best film of its type ever made. This is a stunningly good film. It's got a really creepy killer. I love the the death for the killer at the end. It's absolutely stunning. A lot of the kills throughout this film are brilliantly staged. The main character is a very engaging guy. I like his relationship with Daria Nicolodi's character. She's never better in any of the Argento films than she is here. I, I love the friendship between the two main characters in this. And it's just a really great mystery. It's got loads of creepy scenes. The soundtrack is absolutely awesome. It's, it's, it's a flawless film, honestly. It's over two hours long, but you're never bored throughout this. If you watch Deep Red and you don't think it's, it's, it's great, then I suspect there is no hope for you in, in terms of liking Argento's catalogue. If you don't like this film, I suspect you're done for in terms of these films. I think you should probably just move on to, to your next thing that you want to try because honestly, this film is absolute jalo gold in a box. It's jalo royalty. It's an amazing film. Yep, so Suspiria is number one for me. This is just one of the best horror experiences I've ever had. This is probably in my top 10 horror films of all time. To give you an example of what other films would be on that list, so things like Halloween, Alien, Dawn of the Dead, the original, The Thing, esteemed company, and Suspiria is right up there with those films. From the minute that Susie Banyan arrives at the airport in this, right through to the end, I'm just absolutely captivated by this film. It's just like some really pleasant horror dream. The atmosphere is just incredible. Music, top notch. The kills in it are fantastic. It's it's a virtually faultless film for me. I've, I've seen it multiple times now and enjoyed it every single one of those times. If you want to hear me talk more about the movie, I've, I've done a full review for this, just like I have done for all of the films in today's video. And in my review, I do go through some of the facets of uh, the 1978 version of Suspiria. But other than that, other than to say that I'm going to wrap it up at this point, thank you for sticking with me while I, while I talked briefly about 19 Dario Argento films. This is the order I would personally rank them in. Do let me know how you would rank them in the comments below, and I'll see you for another video next time. Until then, cheerio, bye-bye.